So I will be talking about uh, soft tissue sarcomas, uh, which are uh, rare cancers according to the definition which uh, Annalisa just recalled. Um, apparently, uh, treatment of uh, soft tissue sarcomas uh, may be viewed uh, as uh, relatively easy because, uh, uh, you know, surgery uh, is all about uh, uh, the treatment of these diseases. So radiation therapy may be added. Um, even if the risk is high, uh, as of today, conventionally, surgery is still uh, the treatment of choice. Uh, also, um, you know that uh, there is some evidence pointing to the use of neoadjuvant chemotherapy when the risk uh, of relapse uh, is high. Um, but then uh, uh, if you go to the metastatic setting, basically uh, if you just have uh, uh, isolated uh, uh, lung lesions, surgery is uh, the treatment of choice, even if the disease is metastatic. You may add chemotherapy if prognostic factors are unfavorable, or you may go to chemotherapy if the disease is uh, advanced. Uh, and then, uh, uh, again, uh, things look simple because uh, doxorubicin alone uh, should uh, uh, still be viewed uh, as a standard, even though you may uh, use uh, multi-agent chemotherapy. Uh, and then, uh, um, then okay, uh, if you go on with uh, the lines of chemotherapy uh, in the advanced uh, setting, uh, you may wish to use uh, some drugs uh, according to an histology-driven approach. But uh, in the end, uh, uh, one could say, okay, if I follow uh, these clinical practice guidelines, uh, these clinical algorithms, uh, it's easy. Uh, I will uh, uh, stay within uh, uh, the state of the art. Which is the difficulty of sarcomas? Uh, the first difficulty is uh, that they may arise uh, uh, everywhere in the body. And uh, uh, this is a difficulty because uh, uh, think, for example, of uh, a surgeon. A surgeon uh, uh, I don't know, a, a breast uh, surgeon or a head and neck surgeon. Uh, okay, when uh, he faces a sarcoma, he must uh, um, change his mind and, uh, uh, and consider that the surgical margin uh, in the case of a sarcoma is conceptually different from the surgical margin uh, of uh, uh, an epithelial tumor, uh, in which basically if the margin is, uh, is free, uh, okay, you did uh, a good surgery, while uh, in sarcomas uh, you have this kind of pseudo capsule uh, around the tumor with a reactive zone uh, around it, uh, which clearly uh, makes uh, uh, radicality uh, more problematic, uh, and uh, uh, you have, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, a different quality of the surgical margin depending on the kind of tissue uh, facing it. So uh, there are some tissues like these ones, which are very strong uh, barriers uh, to the invasion from a soft tissue sarcoma, while, uh, for example, in, a, uh, in the context of a muscle, you must uh, keep your margins uh, much wider. So, in other, in other words, uh, uh, the uh, sarcoma surgeon uh, must know the disease and uh, must use uh, uh, criteria which are specific for sarcomas even when uh, he operates on uh, a uh, primary site uh, in which uh, uh, other tumors are much more common. 
Uh, so this uh, uh, anatomic, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, heterogeneity of uh, sarcomas uh, uh, is uh, is a limiting factor to quality of care, if you want. And the other main difficulty has to do with the dozens of histologists uh, which are uh, represented within uh, the sarcoma family. Because uh, uh, these histologists uh, matter a lot. Uh, they matter surgically because, for example, the, um, the kind of margin uh, you must uh, uh, use uh, uh, in a uh, mix of fi uh, fibrosarcoma uh, is different from uh, the margin which uh, you may uh, use uh, in a leiomyosarcoma. And even in the medical therapy, as I very rapidly will show in a while, uh, uh, even the medical therapy should be uh, histology driven. Uh, so these are two main difficulties. Another difficulty is uh, that the uh, incidence of benign mesenchymal tumors is very high. So uh, the incidence of uh, Lipomas, for example, is uh, you know is, uh, is is obviously high, and is uh, higher by a factor of 100 in comparison uh, to the malignant counterpart. So clearly, when you have uh, something like this, uh, even more if you if you look at the at the, uh, the pediatric uh, sarcoma. So when you have something like this, um, a diagnostic delay is. Uh, quite likely, uh, because clearly uh, many lesions uh, which are uh, uh, sarcomas uh, like this one uh, might be confused uh, by the general practitioner, by the radiologist and so on, uh, with uh, uh, benign tumors. So it's, uh, it's quite inevitable, I would say, that uh, uh, you may have uh, some kind of uh, delay in diagnosis. And in this case, you see a biopsy which was uh, uh, ill-placed because, uh, uh, I mean, the surgical scar clearly should be uh, perpendicular to, uh, to what was done in this case. I mean, so referring these patients to uh, institutions, uh, expert uh, in sarcomas uh, uh, would be vital. And uh, in the UK, for example, there was uh, uh, this campaign, uh, uh, you know, that golf uh, is, uh, is, is very important in the UK. So uh, uh, Bob Grimer, uh, a sarcoma surgeon, also a, a golf player, uh, said, okay, uh, since uh, uh, masses in the soft tissues uh, higher than five centimeters are more likely, much more likely to be a sarcoma. Uh, he sent uh, to a lot of general practitioners in the UK a golf ball, uh, just saying, uh, okay, if you feel a golf ball within the soft tissues of your patient, uh, okay, look, it could be uh, a soft tissue sarcoma. Uh, this was an attempt, and by the way, uh, his center was overwhelmed by uh, benign lesions, of course, uh, and <laughs> this is the price to pay, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, it would be important uh, to, to have this patient so, uh, properly referred. Uh, and uh, uh, the same happens uh, even more, I, I, I would say, uh, for example, in the, uh, in the case of uterine. Uh, tumors, because uh, you know that leiomyomas are very, uh, very common in uh, in women. Uh, one woman, well, one woman in two or three uh, has the fibroid, and uh, uh, of course the incidence of a leiomyosarcoma is, is very low. Uh, it's, it's very rare. It's, uh, it's uh, I mean, uh, less than uh, one in one hundred thousand per year. Uh, so again, uh, uh, the problem of a diagnostic delay, but also, for example, the problem of morcellation, uh, which is a, a kind of uh, uh, of procedure, which is uh, uh, which if is done outside an endobag, uh, clearly, if the lesion uh, is actually a leiomyosarcoma, inevitably you have uh, a dissemination of 
uh, of the layer myosarcoma in the peritoneum. Uh, but the high incidence of fibroids uh, uh, is an obstacle. It's a major obstacle to uh, avoiding morcellation in spite of uh, several warnings uh, which have been uh, made by, uh, by many. Um, and by the way, uh, the family of uterine sarcomas is quite heterogeneous because you have leiomyosarcoma, but you have also endometrial stromal sarcomas, so which are, uh, in the case they are low grade, they are very sensitive to hormonal therapy, so while if they are high grade, they are absolutely not. Uh, so they should be treated completely different, uh, differently. Uh, and, and, uh, and you know, this... Uh, uh, I mean, all this is a, is a major obstacle. I mean, you know that uh, just in sarcomas, uh, 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 this is the uh, label, no, uh, which uh, was given to those surgical procedures uh, which uh, are uh, misplaced uh, by a surgeon who is not experienced uh, in sarcomas. Uh, so, uh, whoops uh, is uh, what the, the surgeon says uh, wh when uh, uh, he understands that it was a sarcoma. So these uh, whoops procedures uh, are exactly what we should avoid uh, in the case of uh, sarcoma. So it's true that uh, a local relapse may be or may not be a risk factor for a systemic relapse because we have the same prognostic factors which increase the risk of a local relapse and maybe uh, prognostic factors also of, of, a, of a systemic relapse. But uh, in any case, at the very least, even if a local relapse uh, um, doesn't entail necessarily a higher risk of a systemic relapse per se, uh, however, at least uh, uh, you will uh, uh, worsen the quality of life of your patient uh, and you will increase the costs for the system if uh, the local control is not, uh, is not achieved. Uh, and uh, by, uh, by the way, uh, these are French data uh, in which you see that not only the local control but also overall survival is different depending on whether uh, surgery was done uh, within the reference centers or outside the reference centers in sarcomas. So, uh, first surgery is uh, uh, the first surgery is uh, something which should be made uh, at the uh, sarcoma center. And clearly, the surgeon should be aware of uh, uh, which disease uh, uh, is dealing or she is dealing with. And so a preoperative biopsy uh, is vital to have uh, uh, preoperatively uh, the diagnosis available because this will change completely uh, the kind of surgery which uh, will be done in, in several cases. The problem is uh, that uh, then uh, the pathologic diagnosis uh, may be uh, inappropriate in a substantial number of cases. Uh, there are data, these are again French data, but uh, there are data in Italy, there are data in the US, uh, which are absolutely the same. So outside uh, the environment of uh, uh, sarcoma centers, the pathologic diagnosis of uh, soft tissue sarcoma may be inappropriate in as many as uh, one third of cases. So if the diagnosis is made in the community, uh, is not referred to a, a sarcoma pathologist, the probability that uh, it will be inappropriate uh, may be as high as uh, 30%. So the pathologic diagnosis is the other thing which is vital to centralize in order to improve the quality of care of sarcomas. And uh, uh, in, in practice, this means uh, that multidisciplinarity must be complied with. Uh, this means uh, that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the surgeon uh, needs to be a sarcoma surgeon, the, um, the pathologist needs to be a sarcoma pathologist, but also the medical oncologist, because, you know, 
Uh, these are data pointing to the value of neoadjuvant chemotherapy. There is still some discussion about this data. This is the update uh, which Alessandro Gronchi uh, made at the ASCO meeting in 2019. But uh, there is some difference, and especially there is a difference for patients who are at a higher risk of relapse. So choosing whether to do a new adjuvant chemotherapy is a multidisciplinary decision uh, which uh, implies uh, that you have a sarcoma surgeon, a sarcoma radiation oncologist, uh, and uh, a sarcoma medical oncologist. So multidisciplinarity is justified by the fact that in uh, several cases today, uh, treatment of sarcomas uh, is multimodal. So you need to have a sarcoma tumor board uh, making the first clinical decision. The first clinical decision, as usual in oncology, is often uh, what makes the difference uh, or may make the difference for the patient's prognosis. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, the uh, data, the epidemiological data from your care point to differences in, uh, in survival across uh, uh, Europe. Uh, this is maybe due to uh, some biases, of course, but maybe due especially uh, to some diagnostic delay, first of all, uh, and also by the quality. Of the, uh, of the treatment, and especially the first treatment, because clearly the first treatment is what may make the difference, actually. Then you know uh, the natural history of sarcomas is such that surgery of pulmonary metastasis uh, may be important, because uh, in, uh, I mean, it's, it's something which goes back uh, to, uh, to some centuries ago, if you want, uh, and, uh, um, of course, only a proportion, a small proportion of these patients may be actually cured because they need to be resectable, they need to have good prognostic factors. But there is a proportion of these patients who may be cured by means, by, uh, by means of surgery or lung metastasis. And there are also the other ones, uh, those who are not cured by surgery, may be operated on repeatedly um, with uh, uh, I mean, adopting uh, the approach of the iterative surgery of lung metastasis because uh, it may also be a palliative treatment uh, like chemotherapy. Uh, of course, when uh, when prognostic factors uh, are not good, chemotherapy may be added or chemotherapy may be used despite of surgery of lung metastasis and all the more when the disease is uh, uh, advanced uh, uh, systemically. Uh, then, as I said uh, before, doxorubicin alone or doxorubicin plus a force may be uh, the option. But then uh, you have several drugs uh, after the first line approach, uh, for example, trabectidin uh, in leiomyosarcomas and uh, liposarcomas, uh, gemcitabine in leiomyosarcomas and angiosarcoma, dacarbazine in leiomyosarcoma and solitary fibrous tumor, pazopanib, especially in synovial sarcoma and leiomyosarcoma, cerebulin in liposarcoma. So I'm just uh, uh, raising this, uh, uh, these cases because uh, all, the, uh, all of them point to a, um, an histology-driven use of chemotherapy in order to maximize uh, your, uh, uh, your results. But then, uh, uh, again, even beyond uh, these uh, uh, more conventional cases, uh, okay, in liposarcomas, for example, continuous infusion iphosphamide may be useful. In mixed liposarcoma, trabectidin is completely different in its uh, outcomes uh, from the other sarcomas. Uh, Leiomyosarcomas uh, may be treated with gemcitabine, as I said, with dacarbazine, uh, but probably not with iphosphamide, which on the contrary is much more active in synovia sarcomas. Alveolar sopar sarcoma may be treated with antiangiogenics and possibly also with uh, as a therapist, uh, solitary fibrous tumors uh, with antiangiogenics, uh, picomas with mTOR inhibitors, uh, angiosarcoma with taxins, 
which are poorly active in the azo sarcomas, uh, gemcitabine is active in angiosarcoma, dermatofibrosarcoma is a molecular biology which uh, makes it uh, sensitive to imatinib, um, my fibroblastic inflammatory tumor is a strange tumor which may respond to ALK inhibitors. Extraskeletal mixed chondrosarcomas may be sensitive, again, to antiangiogenics. Desmoid tumors have a completely different natural history. They don't metastasize. They may respond to low-dose chemotherapy. Surgery should not be used in most cases because of the natural history of these tumors. So they are completely different from so from the other soft tissue sarcomas. And even, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, drugs uh, which may be more active uh, might not be necessarily used in first line because uh, lower, uh, lower toxicity drugs may be more uh, useful. Okay, there is a problem in sarcomas that uh, when you look uh, at the randomized trials uh, on, on each of these drugs, you may see uh, a benefit in progression-free survival in particular, but much less in survival. And so many say, okay, uh, what are we talking about? We are talking of something which uh, is not that useful uh, in terms of survival. But look at uh, this uh, epidemiological data, again, uh, from, uh, from France. Uh, they saw in their registry of uh, metastatic patients that leiomyosarcomas have a better prognosis than the other histologists. And leiomyosarcomas are aggressive sarcomas. So uh, it's uh, difficult not to think that, uh, I mean, the reason may well be that uh, while uh, for other sarcomas, uh, the drugs available are not so many, in leiomyosarcomas you have uh, so many drugs uh, uh, active and effective, uh, but, uh, uh, it's quite paradoxical that you see a survival benefit in, a, uh, in an observational study and not in each uh, of the trials done in each of the uh, chemotherapy lines uh, which you can use. In other words, probably uh, you would see something in survival only if you did a trial comparing doxorubicin alone versus all these lines of chemotherapy one after the other. Clearly, such trials are not feasible, are not ethical, and nobody will ever uh, do them now. But probably um, this is the reason why uh, we find it so difficult to find the, the differences in survival in sarcomas. Uh, and so most probably, uh, there are also epidemiological data pointing to an improvement in the prognosis of advanced sarcoma patients, even at our institution, for example, we also published this data. Uh, survival of our patients has improved. But clearly, there may be a lot of biases in this analysis, but it's difficult not to think that something has to do with a variety of drugs which now are available, depending on the histology in advanced suspicious on the other side, this is a very advanced sarcoma patient. This may be uh, a case for palliative therapies. But you, if you look at the PET scan of this patient, uh, you see that the PET scan is completely negative outside the lungs. So uh, you have uh, several advanced uh, sarcoma patients who may be quite young, who may have disease just in their lungs, pulmonary uh, failure uh, is their uh, palliative challenge, and you understand very well that uh, treating pain is much easier than uh, treating uh, dyspnea, uh, so uh, and pulmonary failure. So uh, also palliative care should be specific to some extent for sarcomas, and in fact, uh, we are trying to study these patients also from the uh, under the perspective of palliative, of palliative care, which has never been done, uh, unfortunately. But uh, really, I mean, you don't have cachexia. You may have young patients. You may have especially uh, lung disease. Uh, the rest of the body uh, is uh, safe. So uh, these are really palliative challenges. Uh, and on the other side, for patients, for sarcoma patients uh, uh, who, 
who are cured of their disease, and they, in, in the end, they are more than uh, 50%, more than 50% of sarcoma patients are cured of their disease. Okay, there are only problems of survivorship. You know very well that survivorship today is a big problem because, you know, 5% uh, of the whole population, uh, I mean, are uh, uh, survivors, are cancer survivors. So, uh, in the case of sarcoma, so clearly you have uh, all the problems, of, for example, the sequelae of, of limb surgery uh, and, uh, and does all the problems the, in, in, uh, in terms of rehabilitation and uh, quality of life and so on. And then uh, you have the problems, so for example, of children with sarcomas are treated uh, in their childhood, uh, who clearly can develop a lot of uh, of medical problems uh, when they are uh, uh, older. Uh, so uh, even survivorship is quite specific and uh, you can make the difference. So it's true that uh, if you clearly, if you comply with guidelines, uh, okay, it's, uh, it's fine and you will uh, treat better your patients. But uh, again, uh, once more, these are French data. Uh, they compared the sarcoma patients are treated according to the guidelines, so with sarcoma patients treated uh, I mean, uh, differently from guidelines, and clearly those treated according to guidelines uh, go better. But uh, then, uh, if you also look at uh, which patients were treated within sarcoma centers and which patients were treated outside sarcoma centers, okay, the best ones were those treated according to guidelines within sarcoma centers. Because uh, uh, those treated with guidelines outside the sarcoma centers uh, were worse uh, than them. And this is understandable because clearly, uh, okay, you can do surgery, but then according to guidelines, but then if you are not an expert, an expert sarcoma surgeon, uh, uh, of course the quality of, sur of the surgery will do. Uh, will be uh, lower. So we tried in these years uh, to do something about the requirements, the quality requirements uh, of sarcoma centers. Uh, so which are the resources which uh, a sarcoma tumor board uh, should have as a core uh, tumor board and then uh, in, uh, there should be other facilities available within an extended uh, tumor board. Um, this means uh, centralizing these patients uh, to, to sarcoma centers or otherwise networking. Uh, Annalisa Tram already uh, talked about this and I will uh, uh, we say a couple of words at the end of this session about, uh, about networking. But clearly uh, these uh, uh, aspects of the sarcoma treatment uh, are uh, primarily important. Uh, so the pathologic diagnosis, the strategic uh, clinical decision making at the beginning, the local treatment, but I will, uh, I would add also the systemic therapy, uh, even for, uh, uh, for advanced, uh, advanced patients. Thanks a lot for your attention.